Welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Kerry Stevenson, and I'm really pretty excited about talking to Paul Burton. He's the Managing Director of TNG. If you don't know who TNG are, they've got a very large critical minerals project up in the Northern Territory. But the reason I brought Paul on today is they've come out with an announcement about moving their processing facility. We're going to get into that in a minute. Uh, but Paul, great to see you. It's been a little while since I've had a chat to you. Indeed, it has. Good to see you too, Kerry. Uh, well, thank you, because I know how busy you've been. But um, before we get stuck into today's announcement, um, can you just give our listeners an overview of who are TNG? ASX code, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, TNG, nice and easy. Yeah, TNG, we've been developing the Mount Peak project in the middle of the Northern Territory for the last few years. And uh, it's now at the most advanced stage of, of any of these critical mineral type deposits. We have offtakes in place. We have um, a good German engineering group doing all the final engineering for us. We have major project status from the federal government and the Northern Territory governments and uh, um, a lot of support for getting this project um, up and running. And um, we have our own um, processing, um, which we patented called Taiwan. And we believe that this will be the process of choice for the future of uh, companies that have these types of deposits. So um, the future is looking bright for, uh, for the company. Future is looking bright, but you've come out with an announcement today, and I want to dig into that a little bit, that it, it, in that you've, that Tyvan facility is you've moved the processing plant from its original location. So, Paul, um, just explain why the change, because, and, and what, does, what impact does that have? Does that slow things down a little bit in terms of development? Yeah, first of all, um, Kerry, I'd just like to make, make point out that the, the, the decision to move is not based on, uh, on anything to do with the Northern Territory Government or the Northern Territory okay. Environmental Protection Agency. Um, factors have come into our overall review. In fact, we triggered a review um, earlier in the year as a, as a result of, uh, of, of re-looking at Mount Peak. And I say re-looking at Mount Peak as an integrated site because it was originally considered that we would have the process plant down there, have everything down, down there. There were two hurdles at that stage. One was enough water, um, which we, we assessed that there wasn't enough water for a combined process and beneficiation plant at that time. Okay. And the other one was, was gas that um, our engineers at the time um, advised that they, they didn't think there was enough gas in that existing pipeline for the process plant as it was then. What's happened over the last 12 to 18 months is that we've been doing um, the feed for the project, which is the, which is the next one after a feasibility before you get into your, your project finance. So as I say, we're very advanced. This feed was being done by the SMS group in, in Germany uh, with our engineers and consultants here as well. And during the feed process, we first of all managed to optimize the plant to a degree where um, we had uh, the minimum amount of gas requirements that we, we possibly could. So that was a, a good, so we reduced our overall requirement. And as we we're in the feed, we wanted to get our a full handle on the costings of, of the gas, the availability of gas and uh, what price, et cetera, and contracts we might place. So we had a, an expert consultant who deals with gas nationwide look at our project, look at all the availability. And they advised that there was in, indeed enough gas in that pipeline and of the right quality to, to take on a, a complete integrated facility. So that was an, an interesting um, result out of, out of the feed. Mm -hmm. During the environmental process uh, last year, um, we addressed some stakeholders' concerns of, uh, of raw water runoff going into Darwin Harbour uh, by <clears throat> including into our plant a water recycling process. Now, obviously, this added to the capex, but it res it resolved the 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 um, issues, environmental issues, which of course is is foremost within uh, within our company for our, for development of a big project like this. So that solved the water water recycling water water issue. So when you then put both those factors into a review of the whole Mount Peak site, the two previous hurdles that prevented us from having an integrated facility there. Have been solved so that that clearly came out when we did our, our review and then when we looked at the the permitting um uh, potential for darwin to um take a bit longer than having one down an integrated facility down at mount peak 
this is what really, really um, focused our attention and uh, made us make, make the move. The other thing that's very important is, is with the feed study that's been done, it really doesn't matter where the, the site is, is located. We can use a lot of that engineering data um, down at, uh, at, at Mount Peak. So that, that work doesn't have to be redone where, where we're just moving that location. In fact, um, having a mine that feeds directly into a beneficiation plant, which feeds directly into the downstream processing, yep. is only a massive increase in efficiency and lowering our costs overall. So it's, it's a, it, that's an extremely important view. Although the Darwin land site was, was very, very promising, it did have its challenges. Um, yeah. We were working through those. But um, having, having triggered this review, and in that review, we looked at a number of, a number of aspects, which we've identified in the announcement today. And in, indeed, we looked at other potential locations as well. But you cannot get away from having an integrated facility at the mine site where you're producing the concentrate um, as the most efficient and cost-effective way of, of uh, producing the high-value products that we will be. I mean, so, I'm, I'm just a simple country girl, Paul, but it seems to me it makes a whole lot of sense. And there must be some cost savings in moving the facility to be at site, so to speak. Well, absolutely. I mean, first of all, you're not building two plants. You know, exactly. A big plant in Darwin and a big plant down, down there. And this was always a challenge. It was always, always the case. And we were always trying to look at how we, how we can we integrate everything at that Mount Peak. And uh, I think it wasn't until we got to the feed stage and then uh, I suppose to some degree, the uh, environmental process actually helped that as well by introducing, we never thought about a water treatment plant in the past to overcome the, the water um, potential shortage wow. down at the mine site. So there we are. It's, it's interesting how things come up. Now, with respect to timing, yep. um, yes, of course, there, there's going to be some additional work that we need to do. But look, we're rapidly onto it. We know exactly. We know the mine site extremely well. Our environmental consultants do. The EPA do. Um, we have a, a, an environmental license down there already. We can just build on that um, yep. to integrate the, the plant. The mining license, importantly, down there is very large and has enough room for a processing plant and in fact is, is a license for us to mine beneficiate and process so it's a it's a uh, it, the license itself is is very very prominent good for us um we also cut out a lot of a lot of logistical costs by having not having a, a rail running up and down to darwin and bringing waste back because the challenge the other challenge that we had with the water was that um, although we solved the water problem what we introduced was another problem of waste when yeah. we filter the water, we produce a lot of waste, although it's benign, it has to go somewhere. And um, so that, that was a, a logistical challenge too. So it overcomes all of that. Well, so, it, uh, it, yeah, and, and to me, it seems like it's a much more logical way to do it. Um, how far down the track were you with the Darwin Processing Facility and what will happen with that land and that area at the moment? Well, we were quite advanced with respect to design because the 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 layout of the plant was was uh, being based on on that uh, that land configuration in in Darwin. Um, but as I say, that can just be be principally moved into a much more optimised yeah. uh, linear um, plant down at down the mine site. But the land there, interestingly enough, is um, is is still very much of interest to TNG. Oh. We have um, been announcing recently a, a, a separate business model of green hydrogen production, and we've gone into a joint venture with the Malaysian group, who are very advanced with their own own system called uh, High Sustain, okay. AGV High Sustain. They're very advanced. They have uh, big offtake agreements with uh, with uh, Asian countries, including including Japan. They really wanted a partner in Australia. We we knew. I personally knew. Um, two of the, uh, the directors and um, so we, we it, it fitted into our, our overall plan because building a big project like this in today's environmental concerns mm. you have to, have to have plans for being a net zero um, carbon producer so yeah. green hydrogen is, is one of the ways to, for, for us to go so what we hope and we have uh, not gone into this blind that with NT government, we have had provisional discussions and uh, advice about our, our wishes. Hopefully that land will be um, available for us to have a the first ever high sustain 
green hydrogen plants in the country. Wow. That, that plant will be for export. So it dovetails in with what's existing happening in, uh, on that middle arm precinct. Already they're exporting uh, liquefied natural gas to Japan, yep. um, but also for the local market. And indeed, we expect to have a, a green hydrogen facility uh, powering part of our plant down at the mine site because we have plenty of room for solar panels um, to provide the energy input for um, green hydrogen production. So yes, that land, we're, we're, we're sort of moving a, pro, a process, a project out of Darwin, but we're bringing another one in. Um, so it's, uh, it's probably... It's, so that's, it's, a, that's, that's an extra value add for shareholders. And has the market... Yep. Has this been a little bit on the quiet, Paul? Because I haven't picked up on this. And uh, I'm just wondering, is this added value for shareholders? Because you've got Mount Peak, you've got the vanadium, you've got the processing facility, et cetera, et cetera. But the green hydrogen, that wasn't in the original plans, I don't think. Absolutely not, no. And it, you're absolutely right. I think it is a, is, is a huge value add. And uh, it hasn't really been, been picked up, I think, principally because... Earlier in the year, we did have this surprise, as it were, from the from the NTEPA about some more work to be done on the Darwin site, and um, that we've been working through that. And I think that created a bit of a, you know, we're treading water a bit um, from our from a shareholder perspective. There wasn't a lot to announce. There wasn't a lot for us to to um, to do while we worked through this whole review. Uh, big team of engineers behind me, um, looking at all aspects of and some external consultants, external consultants, all aspects of the project and location yep. of the, the plants. So, yeah, I think it has been missed, but look, um, which is why we haven't done interviews like this either, Kerry, because there's... Yes, you have been some, a little bit quiet, Mr. Burton. <laughs> yes, it's just unlike me. So it, and usually um, we would be, be um, marking the, the path forward very, very... Uh, vocally and clearly in many different avenues, but until we make this, had made this decision, which I think uh, has, is, has has been a while coming, but um, we had to really tick all the boxes uh, before we came out and made today's announcement. So a challenge uh, at the beginning of the year is turned into a a double opportunity with the moving of the plant, which is giving you. Uh, some cost savings and all that logistical elements and all those sorts of things. It's, it's becoming a much more, I guess, a cohesive um, uh, proposition down there. But then, of course, and, and then you've managed to find a partner for the green hydrogen to use with the Darwin facility. I don't think the market yep. understands exactly what you've done, and maybe it's because you have been a little bit quiet, but I'm excited to have you on here today to talk about that. Um, before we get into the last little bits, though, Paul, um, what are the commodity markets like at the moment for Vanadium? Are they strong? Very strong. And uh, Vanadium prices tripled, I think, since the start of the year. There's, um, there's, 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 a, there's a paucity of Vanadium deposits coming on stream. And I, I would like to say that ours is one of the most advanced, um, albeit that we still have these permitting challenges, but uh, we were, we're getting through them most advanced in the, in the world is coming on. So there is there is significant demand for vanadium, both from traditional areas of, of steel making and high quality steels. Right. These days that you can talk about green steel where you can have the green energy, but also you want less and less coal part, coal, coal, coal and other additives going into the steel make to make the steel. And the more vanadium you have, the less iron ore and everything else that you, you need as well. So that that makes an, a, a change from its traditional um, use, but also the, the vanadium redox batteries, which we we've, we've always been banging the drum on, and and indeed, uh, this is probably for another interview, we have a um, very strong business case for our vanadium redox batteries, and we have a, a partner in Singapore now that can supply the batteries called B Flow, and um, this will this will tie in with our all our, our green hydrogen um, uh, facility, I think. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very strong because although you might have green and alternative energies uh, coming up, you still need to be able to store it and that you need yeah. large storage batteries. Lithium's got its own part in the sector and going very strong. In my honest opinion, you're going to see vanadium take the same path as, as, as lithium on this. Uh, yeah, Paul, um, you've done a lot of work and I, I, I will say this about you, you're very thorough. What can investors... Um, 
look towards um, between now and the end of the year? And that's number one. And number two, when is it likely that you might be getting into production? Because I know you, 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 you've got plenty of cash at the moment, but we've got to talk funding, not for this interview. We'll do that next time. But give us a view of what's going to uh, the news flow coming up and when do you think you might be in production? Um, I can see a very strong news flow coming up, certainly between now and the end of the year, um, as we um, <clears throat> we solidify the position down at Mount Peak. We, uh, we, we will engage an Australian, a tier one Australian engineering group uh, to assist because we, we have the battle with COVID at the moment as well because SMS can't get a team in um, to, uh, to advance their work. So we've, we've had to uh, discuss and negotiate the various things there as well. But so good, good strong news flow. Um, moving into production, well, if all the stars aligned, um, I would see that we should be uh, financed hopefully by the end of next year. Um, and um, possibly second half of next year, we could actually start seeing some work on the mine site itself, subject to permitting and everything else. Um, you then have a two-year construction period. Um, but interestingly enough, that's, that's, it's actually going to be much shorter. It might be much shorter now. Um, that was what we always had at the at the. Oh, Darwin yes, site. Knew, because of yeah. the moving the facility. We'll, do, you'll be, we'll be building it all at the same time. Just got to put the pedal to the metal and all that stuff. Well, we're running out of yeah. time, Paul. Um, really? Everyone Bye. knows the way I like to finish these. Um, I, uh, a lot of investors interested in what you're doing at TNG. What are three reasons? Now, I've already come up with one because I wasn't aware of the green hydrogen part. Of, I, I was always looking at Mount Peak and the vanadium and all that sort of stuff. So, But I'll leave it up to you. Give me three reasons why investors should be sitting up and taking notice right now. Well, I think the first thing is that we, we are a very large advanced project of, uh, of critical minerals. So uh, critical minerals exposure, and we're, we're very advanced. Uh, one of the largest projects in the country with all federal approvals um, and federal major project status and, and the Northern Territory major project status. So a lot of support to get this up. So it is a project that's going to happen. Secondly, I mean, the green hydrogen is another aspect that uh, are, I think yeah. is, is a, a huge topical interest at the moment, and we're there. We, we actually have a, a, a pathway forward for, for that. Um, finally, I think, look, there's no doubt um, that I, uh, we are undervalued at the moment. Well, very much so. We, our market cap is hovering around 100 million. Right. The NPV of the project's economics has not changed. It's still... NPV around about uh, three billion Australian dollars. Um, there's a massive disconnect there between our uh, our market cap and that. So the, the the value of the company now and then the future value um, is 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 not being re recognised. Yeah, that's that's big numbers. One hundred million yeah. market cap and a three billion NPV. I'm going well. That that tells me that there's there's a disconnect of of some sort there, Paul. So yeah. And um, you know we're at the bottom of the mountain, so it's only going to go going to go one way. So, uh, well, uh, you're certainly doing the work to get it there. Um, I'm excited about your green hydrogen, uh, JV. That sounds exciting. I want to come back and talk to you more about that when we next catch up. Uh, yep. But well done. And I really, you know, some people might look at it and think that moving that processing facility, oh, there must be a problem. Actually, it's brilliant because it just brings everything together. And I. I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I'm assuming there'll be cost savings associated with that as well. So congratulations. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Well, well done. It's all very exciting news, and I'm really pleased I managed to catch you today. Paul, thanks so much for joining me on Small Caps. Very welcome, Kerry. Good to see you. Thanks very Great much. Great to see you.